Governor General and NLA spread Christmas cheer to communities. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, December 24th, 2019, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade brought smiles to the faces of boys and girls on Thursday as she executed her annual Christmas toy distribution. Her Excellency presented gifts to children from St. Paul's and surrounding areas. She joined several government ministers and parliamentary representatives who also distributed toys to their communities in days leading up to December 25th. In the spirit of Christmas, the National Lottery's Authority presented hampers and toys to the Queen Elizabeth Home, Mount Gay Hospital, Dorothy Hopkins Home, Bel Air Home, Father Maligan Home for Boys, and the Richmond Home. For more than 10 years, the NLA has made it a tradition to give back to the homes at Christmas. We're going to be doing on Thursday, we give donations to the home. This is part of our give back to our persons who would have done their part, especially the elderly people who would have contributed towards to society in the past. They no longer can, can do that. So we try to remember them every year. We're not saying this is the only time that we remember them, but this is the time that we give back based on what we would have received. And it's a venture between the National Lotteries Authority and CBN. CBN is Canadian banknote company. They are the service providers of our games. So we give back a percentage, as I said, of what we would have received. That was Human Resource Manager at the NLA, Sherry Stephen Cromwell. The residents of the elderly and children's institutions were serenaded with Christmas music and presented with the kind donations. This has been a, a repeated thing every year. You come here um, bringing us this check and we really do appreciate it surely shows your commitment to nation building and giving back to the less fortunate. And we just want to thank you, applaud you for your efforts, and wish you and your, your staff a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2020. And I know it will go a long way, so I know the boys are looking forward to a blessed Christmas. So thank you once again. A heartfelt thank you to the National Lotteries Authority for giving us this few thousand dollars check. We really appreciate it and it will go a long way. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Did you join the public service on or after February 22nd, 1985 and have since retired? This might be important to you. Government understands that the NIS pension may be insufficient to take care of your needs. So, while it awaits the court's ruling on the matter of pension for public officers, government has taken action to protect your quality of life so that you can take care of your needs in the meantime. Persons who joined the public service on or after February 22, 1985 and serve continuously in an established position for a minimum 26 years and 8 months and retired at age 60 may be eligible to receive an advance payment, which when combined with NIS, represents 70% of their last salary. For more information, call or visit the Pension Secretariat in the Department of Public Administration Ministerial Complex. 440-3767. Welcome back. 19 members of the education sector were recognized for their contribution to the education system during the Ministry of Education's 2019 Retirees Recognition Award Ceremony last Thursday. Two posthumous and two special awards were also presented to Naja Andal from the Ministry of Works and Brenda Labory, a former school feeding officer. The ministry also bid farewell to 12 members within District 3 during a retirement ceremony. District coordinator within the Ministry of Education, Kathy and James, commended the retirees and gave the assurance that their legacy will be carried forward as the education sector continues to grow. No amount of money can be paid to you for what you have done, for the service that you have provided to our people, in Grenada, Kariku, and P.T. Martinique. Everyone in this room knows that you don't go into teaching or in the field of education for money. People become teachers or educators to make a difference in the lives of others. 
to teach them, to show them ways that they can accomplish and reach their fullest potential. You have laid a foundation, and a foundation for us to take education within Grenada, Karaku, and Piti Martinique to higher levels. Finally, in the news, the Caribbean Examinations Council will be reviewing its method of operation that caters to the needs of autistic students. This is a direct result of a recent high-profile CXC meeting and award ceremony held in Grenada. We have more in this report from Annette Moore. During the principals' meeting, part of the CXC 2019 governance meetings in Grenada, Michelle Braffitt, principal of the School for the Deaf in Grenada, spoke on the challenges of autistic students. First of all, I would like to commend um, CXC in terms of students who are deaf and more or less accommodating for them. So far, we would have had um, good results. Um, but my concern is for the children who are autistic, brilliant, wired differently and I do not think that CXC is really accommodating for them. Brilliant students. For example, a student who is autistic, um, for example in Spanish, can do the orals in terms of content, in terms of facts and so they can regurgitate everything, they can write everything. But when it comes to a question where they may have to express their emotions, it will be difficult for a student who is autistic. What sort of modification, uh, what system in terms of grading, I'm not talking about doing CCSL, but doing in terms of CXC, because they are brilliant. CSEC, how would you more or less accommodate for these students? At CXC's closing press conference, CXC Registrant CEO Wayne Wesley indicated his appreciation for Braffitt's contribution and also what CXC may do with regard to the issue raised. One of the things that resonated with me based on their particular input when I shared the transformation and strategy of CXC with them was our desire to be inclusive. And they actually mentioned in that while we would have done a very good job at dealing with persons with disability, we have not necessarily taken into consideration persons with, that are autistic. And so the suggestion for us to begin to investigate how our products can give consideration to persons who are autistic in writing our examination, I think is something that we have taken on, on board to either work through the universities of the region to help determine how can we put forward assessment instruments that can be utilized by persons who are autistic. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. Thank you, Annette. That story just brought the curtains down on the National Report for Tuesday, December 24th. Let's recap the top story. Governor General and NLA spread Christmas chair to communities. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying Merry Christmas one and all. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.